you're talking about ideas, sustainable cities, energy supply. So uh, basically, the petrol-based energy is not uh, sustainable. But uh, this is uh, the key for driving currently the modern society and modern cities. Without energy, everything stops. So to me, so the second is uh, the air quality. So every day people breathe. If uh, the air is uh, is polluted, and people don't really feel happy. The third is about the uh, food, uh, sustainable supply of the food and better food with better quality for that. Yeah, and also uh, then you're talking about those are the basic requirement: energy, air, and the food, which uh, people rely them on living. Then you try to create some add-on value, which is, uh, for instance, living, uh, living conditions, yeah, living conditions, and you get this uh, uh, high environmental standard. It's not really related to air quality, but it's uh, many things for that. So uh, I would consider uh, those factors uh, to support a sustainable city. The bioeconomy uh, is a new concept. Yeah. And sometimes people think it's, uh, it's vague because uh, as an economy, you've got to have some boundaries. Previously, the economy is divided by what we usually call the, the industry, agriculture, and the service. You could also say the first industry, the, f the second uh, economy, or the third economy for that. So how can we come across a new concept? Because basically, by economy, across these three sectors. You have production, you have um, raw material, and you have services for that. Yeah. So uh, the basic concept for the bioeconomy is, one, it's a circular economy. So if you're using biomass as raw material to produce bioenergy, so you don't really consume the petrol, uh, petrol in, in underground. So you don't really increase the net CO2 emission. Well, you're using the CO2 in the air and using photosynthesis to grow biomass, and using the biomass converted to fuels, chemicals, and materials, which originally come from the petrol. In this way, you created a manner of production that we are not resulting in net CO2 emission. So keeping the earth not getting warm so quickly, so that's uh, from one side. The second the bioeconomy is uh, uh, what we're using is to, to have uh, the agriculture produce less CO2. For instance, currently the meat production are from cattle, from pig. And in the future, the bioeconomy perhaps can create a new manner for providing proteins, rather than to uh, using a lot of plant to feed cattle for them. And currently, those new forms have been available, for instance, in the United States. And there's uh, what we call artificial uh, beef, it's made from stem cells or from uh, microbial production, the ideal protein. So they can formulate a similar style of the steak, which is not coming from the beef, but with a similar taste for that. So this can reduce the CO2 production as well. The, third, the circular economy is when you have a protein, uh, the pollution generated, you could be using biological method to, to regenerate the pollution into useful products to reduce pollution, but also to create something useful. For instance, plastics. If you're using a um, bioeconomy approach to generate bio-based plastics, so which is a, is a, is a, a potential hazard currently, for instance, in the ocean, I'll we'll talk about the microparticles from plastics. This is really hazard to the, to the ocean a living organism. And if using biodegradable plastics, they will not be harmful for the living organisms. So those were also coming from the, what we call the, the biotechnological approach using biomass raw material and bio-based processes to reduce the uh, impact on the environment and to reduce impact on the sustainability, increase the uh, positive impact on the sustainability. The more we learn from, from our planet and the universe, the more we need to invest uh, our uh, thinking, our wisdom, to better understand uh, uh, the planet that we're living. For instance, uh, we now have a better understand, uh, understanding how Earth is formed from many millions of years ago, and uh, we know how many metals are there because they provide uh, 
our living things. For instance, here we are relying on those uh, copper metal things as a very important pillar for the economy. And these are given by the earth, but we should not uh, take it for granted when you think about uh, how those metals are coming from and how we are formed as a species, uh, which is uh, the subject of, uh, of today's conference. And we always need to think about are there living organisms uh, live in other planets? We don't know yet, but uh, for instance in Chile here, we could also think about potentially is there a living organism on, uh, on Mars, a similar station. If we could not understand the planet we are living, for instance the Earth, it's very difficult for us to develop a novel approach to understand what's happening in the other planets. So this is a big platform for us to develop uh, our new approach, new tools, new methodologies, so that we can better prepare to understand better for the, for the future in the universe. So for the first step, we have to invest more on Earth science to understand more happening on history, evolution, and what's going on on the ground that we cannot see, also from the water, from the, water, uh, from the, from the sea for that. And also the atmospheric environment surrounding uh, this, what I call this big Earth science.